in conjunction with Duquesne University. And we look at Pennsylvania, we look at about 13 million people, about 3 million individuals are 60 and older, and elders are defined by age 60 and older. I'm 73, old, ugly, and a veteran, so I'm in that category. And at one point, I received a phone call telling me that my electricity was about to be shut off. And the person talking to me said that I had to wire X amount of dollars, and they would only take it if it was a prepaid card, and um, otherwise the shutoff was being um, placed on, on our home. Interestingly enough, I called the Attorney General's office to give, give them the phone number, and the phone number was some remote place that they couldn't, but it's another example of how you can be approached to go and buy and purchase prepaid cards and send them to them. The reason the question is interesting about scams about shopping and disclaimers at the bottom is that if you at least use a credit card, if you school yourself on the back of the credit card, there's a number you can call and you can dispute the charge and start that process. But also, you should call the Attorney General's office or the DA's office because there are other people that you may be able to protect by your notice that this kind of scam is going on. That's PA Attorney General, and that would be Alan McGill, who will be speaking to you about the Attorney General's office and their, and their efforts to prevent elder fraud and scam. Good morning. Thanks for having me here. So, as the judge said, yeah, I work in what we call the Office of Public Engagement. So our office is a pretty vast office. Um, you know, my actual background is in narcotics. Uh, Deputy Attorney General asked me if I was interested in joining this unit, um, and it's a crime prevention type unit. So um, our job and our function here is to provide information to all manner of folk across the Commonwealth. And so we do these as well. And so scams and frauds and those sort of um, topics we have, uh, probably about half a dozen of those here to this. Um, every manner from romance scams to you know, typical identity theft. Um, in fact, if you get a chance to catch one of our programs, uh, I myself, I have photographs that I can show you skimmers, what they look like, how to avoid them, um, RFID protection so that they can't get our information. We usually go into how they steal our information in the beginning, how they access it, and then the various scams. And scams all have, uh, most of them, not all, I should say, but most of them have a similar pattern or red flags to them, such as trying to rush you into a decision. Um, things like trying to get you to wire money or use a money order or some sort of gift card. There are a lot of agencies that will um, respond to that query. So our next speaker, speaking of having your money assaulted is the PA Department of Banking and Securities um, talking about investment fraud and uh, cyber per uh, uh, items that are used to uh, take your money. So I'm going to ask Tim uh, Arthur to come up and speak to you about that aspect. Thank you, Judge. All right. Good morning, everyone. So has anybody heard of the Pennsylvania Department of Banking and Securities? Okay, there's a few. So we are a small agency, not well known, uh, cabinet agency. Our primary role is a regulatory agency. So credit unions, non-bank lenders, uh, so a mortgage lender, a uh, mortgage servicer, uh, consumer lenders, so somebody that's loaning money that might not be a bank. We also have security, so if you're talking about investing your money, there's a portion of those uh, investment representatives that we regulate. So we go in and make sure that everything is up to date. Are people that interact with other groups, religious groups, social groups, community groups. And with that, um, your knowledge is very important in this review of, um, of uh, abuse.
use to the elderly. So you should recognize some of the signs of elderly abuse and, the critic, and that's usually the first step. Um, there are common signs of abuse and some of them are physical like the National Adult Protective Services Association. They identify the following signs of elder uh, abuse and neglect, like someone with sudden inability to meet essential physical, psychological, or social needs, threatening health, safety, and well-being. Or if you see someone disappearing from contact with neighbors or friends or bruising or welts, skin, especially those appearing on the face, um, fingerprints or handprints visible on the face or neck, burns from scalding uh, or from cigarettes uh, in the shapes uh, on the face, cuts or lacerations. Now these are physical things, uh, an indication of there might be something that you might want to suggest someone should follow up on. <coughs> the, um, psychological abuse is um, the passivity or withdrawal or increasing depression, um, evasiveness or reluctance to talk openly, and avoidance of eye contact um, or verbal contact with the caregiver, cowering in the presence of the abuser, uh, hopelessness, missing appointments or things of that nature. The Protective, Protective Service Association uh, looks at financial abuse too. There may be a termination of vital utilities. If they let their telephone uh, lapse, water, electricity, gas or garbage, unpaid bills, um, oversight of finances, transfer of assets to new friends, assisting with finances, um, checks written to cash, um, does not understand their current finances, etc. Um, and this is for all of the audience. I can really help to explain to you around the availability of services as well as the availability of long-term living and care options. That may be what you're asking about. I've got our senior resource guide to help you with and, and we also have information specific to uh, when, when we came here, understanding that there are certain judges and other service experts Certainly. There, there, there's a number of professionals who are able to speak. So, so before we go any further, and, okay. and we're okay. uh, once again, my name is Brian Cable, and I'm a care, care management supervisor, and I can go to you for order of services at the Allegheny County Department of Human Services, where the area agency on aging. Um, when we were asked to come to this event, uh, there are certainly professionals who are able to advise on specific elder justice initiatives and awareness, uh, specific to abuse of the area, concerning any other course information about the uh, uh, programs and services that are offered by our agency, as well as uh, relatively independent at home that you would benefit from maybe in home service, or maybe a volunteer to come visit with you. The group is called our Options Program. It's a program designed for individuals who are relatively independent. We have three service providers throughout the community who provide care management. That means that they'll meet with you, they'll determine what your needs may be, and what kind of supportive services through our Options Program that we can offer. Among the services that are available through the Options Program include the uh, PERS unit, that's an acronym, Personal Emergency Response. That's the little clicker. I call me and I can't get up, right? That's one of the items we offer through our Options Program. Along with that, we offer other services such as home delivery meals, such as personal care, such as housekeeping, where uh, through the implementation of the care plan that we're able to bring these types of services. You know, the service is free. 
The reason for that is the Pennsylvania lottery. That's right. If you <laughs> did, did, did. Yes, yes. So, so when we're talking about services such as the access transportation system, the home delivered meals, and the uh, services offered through the senior centers, these are services that are offered through the uh, subsidized through the Pennsylvania lottery. And as I mentioned, for 90% of the individuals in Alameda County who are receiving the office program, there's no charge. That does mean that you'll need to submit your income information because for some individuals, there is a sliding scale fee for these services. What we're going to do now is something that is always near and dear to my heart. We're going to have law students talk to you. And with that, um, we're going to talk about uh, how to do uh, um, wheels that set. So you're going to clap for anyone. Clap for anyone. For them to be here is important, for them to see this is important, and for them to learn to interact with people, humans, communities. Um, and they also have an opportunity to see services that they may not have seen in class. And that's why this is so important. So we have another question, because these students are so smart. Oh no, you get one, that's it. <laughs>
their benefits and they can be kicked off the benefits, which isn't something that you want to see happen. So what we can do at the Achieve Family Trust is uh, we have both third party and then we have a large pool trust. And the pool trust is something that was enabled by the government back in the 90s. And it allows people with disabilities to put their money into a trust. Then they're not over resourced. They can continue to receive their benefits. However, if they need things beyond um, what they're receiving, or they can go to the trust. We have trust administrators who basically come from social service backgrounds. And they can help by doing a uh, pay for those items that they need. We don't give money directly back to the people, but what we do is we buy the things on their behalf from the trust. As a judge, I can tell you that, uh, and a judge in orphans court, that these uh, issues that come up, uh, come up very often. And just to give you some background on myself, I am a double D graduate of Duquesne University, an undergraduate and a law school graduate. Um, and also, what's more important is, as a Vietnam veteran, I was a United States Navy CB, young and dumb, and got out of the service in 72, went to Duquesne. Um, actually, played football one year there, and I'm in the Sports Hall of Fame, interestingly enough. I from undergraduate school in 76, I took the police test and became a police officer in Allegheny County. And my specialty was wiretap. Um, as a graduate from the academy, um, I went right into undercover because I could climb 60 foot poles based on my military service. And several years, and upon my graduation, District Attorney Polko hired me as an assistant district attorney for one year. And I worked for Bell Atlantic Corporation. Um, was uh, elected, as we do here in Allegheny County in the state of Pennsylvania, to the bench um, in 2007. I came up the ladder one rung at a time, and I think that helps. Um, when you become a judge, you have to take a lot of things in consideration to make decisions. Um, as a Navy CB, I learned to measure twice and cut once. Um, and that's the way I think judges should operate.